This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust out your eyes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What a romantic rendezvous right there. Serena Williams and, and Martha Stewart. Uh, that was a clip from the movie Pixels in theaters this uh, Friday. Ju no, no, July the 24th. Friday, July 24th. And we had the director and producer of the movie, the one and only Chris Columbus wow. is here. Hi, guys. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Hi. Man, I start running down some of your resume and, you know, the whole room just went crazy. I mean, how much money have you made, Chris? For Jesus, real? my <laughs> gosh, man. Why are you still working? <laughs> I love working. So. Okay. <laughs> I love it. it yeah, I do. Right. I love it. I'm just looking at Mrs. Doubtfire, which was one of my favorite movies. And, wow. and, and, and Robin Williams is one of my favorite entertainers. Classic. Yes. Are you okay? Oh, you need to turn the head. You can say it loud. It's all okay. right. We don't, we don't fake anything. You can't hear anything. Excellent. Any? Yeah. Okay, I, great. I'm an older guy, but yeah, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, like, something's wrong. Hearing aid. Um, man, what, what memories do you have about Robin, working with Robin? Uh, it was really tough. You know, Robin... Um, you know, we lived in San Francisco. Robin was the guy who made me leave New York and move to San Francisco. And I, oh. I went out to San Francisco. I lived here for 17 years. I went out to San Francisco to do Mrs. Doubtfire and just uh, fell in love with the city. It also fell in love with Robin and his family. Our kids were the same age, so they hung out together. And it was such a shock, such, yeah. a, such a, you know, real tra a real tragedy, you yeah. know. Um, he had so much to give, but... You know, he's left us with some beautiful work. Some beautiful work, yeah. man. You live in San Francisco, the Heights, right? You still yeah. Live in I used to live on, I don't want you to give your address. I used to live <laughs> on Pine Street. Oh, yeah. Right on the corner of Fillmore and Pine Street. Oh, yeah. That's a half a mile away. Yeah. That's a half a mile away that's from That's a half me. a mile away from me. So, so what side of Pine do you live on? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's I, I don't want to give my you address away. Give, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> don't yeah, set but, them up. Uh, no, that, wasn't that like just a, the most, uh, the architecture, it's just the most beautiful area of Pacific Heights, right? It's, it's inspiring and it's a fantastic, great place to raise my kids. We've been there for since 93, so that's a long time, 22 years. And I just love it there. You know, I want to come back to New York. I really do now that my kids are, you know, grown. And yeah. I, I, I get inspired here as well. This is a much more inspirational place for me. I'm from the Bay, man. I don't want to create no friction between no, us, man. No, I think not it's, it's inspirational too there, Chris. <laughs> wow, right. Pacific is. Heights is a real place? Yeah. There was a movie a long time ago called Pacific Heights. And I just remember. With Michael Keaton. It was yeah. like this thriller. And it wasn't even shot in Pacific Heights. It was shot like in the sunset or something. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. They yeah, faked it. <laughs> they yeah. faked it. They wouldn't let them in. I don't know why they wouldn't let them shoot in Pacific well, Heights. I didn't know that was a real place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I actually moved there from Oakland just to kind of. I thought I was moving into a a, a, a safer environment, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And maybe the week I got there, they they broke into my Jeep. Oh. Um, and this was maybe about 97, mm -hmm. 90. And you were living there since 93. So Chris could have been the culprit that broke into yeah. my Jeep. We would have no idea. It's <laughs> right? fucked up. Um, how, <laughs> <laughs> Pixels, DB, you actually saw this movie, right? I did. I saw it on Friday. Yeah. Very, very very entertaining, I gotta say. People were clapping in the movie, like even even like little kids who had no idea what Pac Man was or right. Mario. There, there was a kid at the end of the movie. He's asking his father, like, "Did you play those games when you were a kid?" And I mean, it was it was a really 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 fun movie. Adam Sandler, Peter Dinklage, even the, the cameos in it were great. I just wanted to know, like, because Earth has been attacked by literally everything you can think of: aliens, clowns from outer space. But with video games, did anybody say like this will never work? You know, like this is kind of a crazy idea. It was, you know, but what. What attracted me to the movie was the concept of these three kids who were, you know, in in 1982, they were the world video arcade champions, you know, and they thought they were going to be the rock stars of the video game world. And then suddenly the arcades closed and they're kind of like lost souls. So I love the idea of picking them up in 2015 and one guy's a conspiracy theorist, the other guy's been in jail and they really have nowhere to go in their lives. And I responded to the fact then that the guy they thought was a loser as a kid becomes president of the United States, and he needs to get them together to fight these aliens because they're the only ones who know these video games as well as they do. I fell in love with that concept. I was just like madly crazy for it. And the ability to create visual effects that the audience really mm -hmm. hasn't seen before, that was cool. Usually these are re reality-based effects, even if it's a dragon flying around or something. But these, to create this 50-foot Pac-Man that's lit from within, that everything he touches pixelates, I thought... 
that's kind of it's like a bad fever dream, you know. So I fell in love with those visuals. Yeah, the effects are incredible, and like um, Qbert when he shows up, the audience fell in love with him because he was just like bouncing around and everything, and just like it, it's it's really fun. So I mean, like kids, adults, whether you're an '80s fan or you don't even know like what <laughs> you know Arkanoid is, you're gonna love it. So it's, it's oh, a really thanks. Good movie. Yeah, the key is you know, kids. I find I saw a six year old girl on her dad's shoulders before the premiere the other night and we had a huge Pac-Man and she goes, Daddy, it's Pac-Man. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> and then and then the parents can go and, t- you know, it's like a bonding thing between the kids and the parents. So mm-hmm. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Donkey Kong is in it? Yeah, he was the toughest. That, Donkey Kong was the <laughs> yeah. He was always a troublemaker. Yeah, he was, what uh, happened? <laughs> he, uh, when, when we got the script, he wasn't even in it because they said, you'll never get the rights. So it took us several months to get the rights from Nintendo. You know, wow. I had to show them drawings animatics and convince them I was going to treat their characters with respect. Centipede? Is there a centipede in it? Centipede is the first, I can say that, first big set uh, piece in the movie. Centipede is hallucinatory. Do not do any mind-altering drugs before you see the centipede. (laughs) Because particularly in 3D, it's like you're in the game. It's so cool, yeah. Man, you you sound like you just enjoyed, like this is one of the most enjoyable uh, movies you ever uh, been a part of. It's enjoyable now. I mean, it was two years of my life. It was, you know, and I'm I love what I do. So what what I do is not hard work. But this was a grueling shoot. This was an intense, grueling shoot. And I had I I had fun making it, but I wanted to make it make sure that I was happy with the movie. And now that it's finished and the movie's about to be released, I'm I'm thrilled with the movie. I'm in love with it. You know. All right, Chris Columbus is here. I want to open up the phone lines. You want to talk with Chris Columbus, 888-742-3345. And he's made so many great movies that um, we're going to see how big of a fan he is of his own work up next. All right, Sway in the Morning, Shade 4 5. This is Waka Flocka and Good Charlotte. Game on from the movie. Game on. That's Good Charlotte featuring Waka Flocka. Made for the movie Pixels. Coming out Friday, July 24th, we have Chris Columbus who's here what a great name to have as a kid i'm sure man <laughs> my my father had no idea what he was getting me into <laughs> yeah i'm sure yeah. man you've heard every joke huh no you know my in the phone book back then it was listed as alex columbus that was my dad's name uh, and, and so i always get these crank calls is christopher there and my dad would say yeah hold on and then i get on the phone and i'd hear people laughing hysterically so uh, it was like and it was the world rounder flat and all this nonsense yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. all right that eliminates my joke all right yeah. have a you had a question for chris okay i gotta come clean sway and chris all right so 92 weeks ago i don't oh, even geez. know how long ago that was but it was years, not even knowing I was going to meet Chris. I was stuck in Chicago O'Hare Airport. And I wrote, as a New York Giants fan, it stunk waking up this morning, walking through Chicago O'Hare Airport. And then I saw this, and it made me think of my favorite movie in the world. Can you guess? Hint. And I put, Kevin. All of these people started to respond, home alone. Look what you did, you little jerk. You guys don't give up or you thirsty for more. Like it was just this whole conversation on Instagram about Home Alone and and what it did. And these are grown people talking. And I was wondering, it made me think the whole day, Chris, now that I have you here. What was it like, like taking over that airport? It was the first time I realized like it hit me where I was. And I had that image of them running through the airport. What was it like for you as a director sort of taking over Chicago O'Hare Airport? They were really, it was back in a time when you could take over an airport. Now, we would never be allowed inside the doors of the airport. So it was, we had the entire airport. We had to get there very early in the morning. Mm. And they had all of the people who were catching flights, like on the sides, walking. And and we had to, we had about two and a half hours to shoot the whole sequence. So we moved incredibly fast. Yeah, we had to move incredibly fast. We had all our cameras in place and... It was it was exhilarating. When you have to work that fast against the clock, it was fantastic. Now, Chris, you know, when Sway began speaking, he was talking about how you have such a storied history. And it's astounding when you listen to it all. And um, going back to the beginning and seeing how you started your career of doing screenwriting, you had Gremlins, you had Goonies. And then I saw like in the 90s, you just took off of directing. Right. And I'm wondering if there was um, what's like the big major difference that made you just say, you know what, I want to do full time directing rather than writing. It was it was in my head since I because I went to NYU. It was in my head back at NYU. My writing teacher said to me, if you can do a couple of screenplays that are successful, they'll let Mm -hmm. you direct. And that's all Mm. I could. So it was always the goal. I always wanted to direct it. I just felt like I need. I wanted to be behind a camera. I originally wanted to be a comic book artist as a kid. I loved Spider-Man. I loved all the Marvel comics. 
-hmm. And I thought I'd move to New York and work for Stan Lee. And, but then I realized I don't want to sit alone in a room for 12 hours a day drawing comic books. <laughs> right. But it prepared me for film. And I wanted to work with people. And writing put me back in a room for 12 hours a day alone. But I knew someday I'd get to get out and hopefully direct. Mm -hmm. I hoped I would, yeah. Chris Columbus is here. You, uh, Pixels is the new movie coming out on uh, July 24th. Make sure you check it out. Brad in Utah. Good what morning, up, Brad. Brad. Hey, how's it going? Doing yeah, okay. Listen, good, good. Hey, I listen to the show every day. And um, Chris, uh, I got three little kids of my own in there. I'm showing them all of your movies like as the years go by, and they just love them. And I'm going to take all three of them to the movie on Friday for sure because we love video games and we love your movies. Oh. Um, you mentioned Donkey Kong. It sounded like Nintendo's kind of hard to get the rights of things. How did you pitch that originally to them since Donkey Kong wasn't even in the script? Well, we had to get a, uh, as I was saying earlier, I had to show them conceptual art, and then I had to do an animated version of the scene I was going to shoot. And it was really like a really sophisticated cartoon of the scene that ended up in the movie. And I had the types of lenses I was going to use, where the actors were going to be, and we sent that to Nintendo, and then we had all these conference calls with them and finally they said yes when they realized I was going to treat their character with respect you know that's what there's a scene in the movie that you probably saw in the trailers where Professor Iwatani the creator of Pac-Man is played by an actor but he gets his hand chomped off by, by his <laughs> beloved son and that <laughs> what inspired me to write that scene was dealing with all of these game companies and the way they talked about the characters they some of them talked about these characters like they were their kids so I thought well the, if there's one really insane moment in the movie it's 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 this creator who really thinks of him as his like Pinocchio son well, did you have any game companies turn you down not in the end you know it's like we were incredibly fortunate in terms of like you know we got everybody we wanted and then at the end of the movie it's like we just, it's a massive attack on Washington, D.C., and we, I, I was sitting behind some gamers at one of the screens, and one of the guys is like, oh, my God, Burger Town, Space Invaders, they keep pointing out. <laughs> we throw in so much stuff. It's like we just want the audience to be, it's like you have to come back and see the movie a second time because you're not going to catch all the game references. I guess they call them Easter eggs or whatever, but there's a ton of stuff in the, in the last 20 minutes of the movie. Chris Columbus, you worked on so many different projects. We want to see how big of a fan you are of yourself. We got a segment that is called Knowledge of Self. All right, okay, so this is what's going to happen. All the work you've done, Mr. Chris Columbus, we want to see if you're really a true fan of yourself as much as we are. Yes. So DB came up with this questionnaire. That's right. We're going to play a couple clips, and you have to try to guess what movie they came from. Oh, my God. I haven't watched <laughs> any of my own movies. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to fail miserably. <laughs> cool. Great. Right. Clip number one. Boy, you look great. Your hair, your eyes. What about them? They're so well placed. <laughs> Uh, Adventures in Babysitting. Correct, oh, okay. correct. Yeah. You wrote that, right? Starting off good. Uh, no, okay. I didn't write you it. Didn't no, write no, no. Okay. I corrected it, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Clip number two. What happened? <sighs> Slight problem with the juicer. I thought your dad fixed it. Hmm. Uh, Home Alone 2? No, uh, Gremlins. Gremlins. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. You didn't know that? <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't seen Gremlins in like 20 years. Oh, okay. I gotta go back. Okay. okay, all right, okay. Clip number three. Why the hell are you dressed like a chicken? <laughs> Home Alone. Yeah. Okay, okay, damn. Oh, give me. All right, clip number four. And I bet it was even more amazing than the time you ate in Godfather's Pizza. Goonies. Yes, correct. Okay, and okay. is it true that you're working on a remake? We are, uh, you know, I'm dealing with it really carefully. They, they want to reboot Gremlins and Goonies, but we have such respect for the people who love those movies that we don't want to disappoint anyone. So they're going to make it with or without me. So I just want to be there to protect it. Got it. Okay. Last clip. I'll just sit there and sip club soda and we'll go over wallpaper samples. Hmm. Wow. Can I hear that again? Okay. <laughs> I'll just sit there and sip club soda and we'll go over wallpaper samples. Have no idea. Mrs. Doubtfire. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. How could you not? <laughs> Come on, Blasphemy. man. Chris Columbus. Thank you. Hey, man. What, a, what do you got? Three out of five? Three out of five. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I didn't fail miserably. Yeah, you're an average uh, Chris Columbus fan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you man. so yeah, much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Pixels, nice. Thanks, July 24th. Make Thanks, sure guys. you check that out. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.